welcome to another product review video. So today we are going to talk about Dark Star uh, Molten Metals. Okay, so this is a um, an interesting metal range. Uh, comes from the company Dark Star, obviously, which is out of the UK. Um, they I picked these up recently because, as many know who watch my product reviews or my videos, I am on a never-ending hunt for the perfect gold. So my uh, true favorite gold to use in true metallic metal, and I, I prefer true metallics to, to non-metallic metal. My true favorite as far as look alone goes, which is what this guy right here was done with. We're back, we remember him from way back in the uh, shading true metallic metal video. Um, this is the alcohol-based Vallejo liquid gold. Uh, I love the look because it looks like metal. I hate the using the product, I guess is what I'd say, because it's a pain to work with. So, um, I'm always looking for new metallic paints. Now, we've talked before about how there's the perfect steel, and that's the Vallejo metal color range. Uh, the metal color in the gold line, though, however, I find supremely lacking, because all it has is one copper and one gold. Um, Dark Star makes an entire range of both uh, gold colors and silvers. Um, quite a bit of range to it, actually. Um, these are 17 milliliter bottles, so pretty standard. Uh, they are £3.50. Um, for a while, they had three packs that you could save money on. Um, they don't have those anymore. Um, I don't know if that's maybe Brexit related or what. I bought these pre that, so I was able to get the little three pack at a discount. Um, this was one of the three packs. This is Regency Gold, Royal Gold, and Classic Gold. But they have a lot more. They have brass and lots of different shades of gold. Imperial Gold, you can kind of see the tones there on those. Uh, very brown gold, very true gold, and a very light uh, gold. <clears throat> so, I like the range of these. So what we're going to do today is, using our friendly ogres here, and we'll also remember this guy from the weathering video, we're going to do a little comparison with uh, some other gold paints. So first off, let's start with our, just the sort of the mid-tone one, which is royal gold. The first thing I'll say is you notice, see if you can hear that, um, all these come with a really nice, very heavy agitator in them, which is great for metallic paints. Um, the pigment is very fine. Um, these will work with a little thinner through an airbrush um, without too much issue. Um, they do take some thinner to go through. You don't want to try to put them straight through your airbrush. <clears throat> but they are airbrushable. Um, so we're going to grab this guy here. Actually, you know what? We're going to start right on, on this guy. Um, since I already have the other gold on here. So the consistency of it, let's take a look and see if you can see it on the palette. This is the royal gold I just put on there. This is our GW Retributor Armor, um, the base color, um, which has become very popular, a, a very newly formulated gold. This right here is the Air uh, Balthazar Gold, um, which I despise, but there we are. Um, and then over here on the side, I also have a 50-50 mix of copper and gold out of the Vallejo Metal Color line. So we're going to kind of run through all these and see how they work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit his helmet up. Um, so let's take a look at how this covers straight over gray. Obviously, one of the big issues with gold is often that you need to undercoat it. So I find it to be a good test to paint it straight onto a mid-tone like gray and see what happens. Um, what does our coverage look like? So you can see it goes on. It's very, um, it is very bright. Um, and so that's what we get. See if we can see that. There we go. That's what we get there out of that side. Um, that coverage is decent. I can still see, you know, some of the gray through there, right? Um, let me make sure my lighting is coming through here okay. Yeah, okay. So now let's try some of the, the Balthazar, or sorry, not Balthazar, some of the Retributor Armor, which is a base color from GW and obviously meant to be um, meant to be the gold. You'll notice they're fairly similar toned. The uh, Retributor Armor is on the 
I guess your right, <laughs> my left, my left. It's this one. There you go. Um, so we're gonna just go ahead and drop that right next to it there. Both of these are very, very yellow golds. Um, okay. And so when we put it next to each other, you can see that the retributor armor is a little more, a little brighter. Um, after that one coat. Um, so this side is the Retributor, this side is the Regency Gold. Um, the Retributor, they're both about the same here on my thumb, but you can see the thinness comparatively there. So it is sort of a two coats to base coat thing or an undershade with brown, um, you know, which is frankly always one of the things that annoys me about gold paints. Um, metallics are one of the few places I want really strong coverage. Um, because I want them to lay down. Now, if I go for a second layer there, the difference is not quite as pronounced and more just based on the fact that one, this one, the Retributor Armor, is much more yellow. Okay. Um, so coverage-wise, it's about the equivalent of most of the metal paints you would see on the market. Um, that is to say, you know, the Retributor Armor really does stand out along with, like, say, the... Um, the uh, the alcohol-based paint that I had, I've talked about previously. I mean, that is one and done. You could paint it over any color, anytime, anywhere. But again, for reasons previously mentioned, it's, it's a bit difficult to work with. So now we're going to do a quick comparison with um, some of the Vallejo Metal color, which I mixed to be a little darker there. <clears throat> so now let's just do the front of the helmet. So now what we've got is that, okay? Um, pretty similar there um, in the amount of coverage, in all honesty. Um, the metal color does cover quite well, um, so you could probably get away with one coat most of the time on this. Um, there may be occasions when that's not possible. Um, again, the real problem with the metal color is the lack of range. Like right there, I was, you know, just quickly threw a mix together, and it wasn't as strong. Finally, let's take a look at the uh, Balthazar over here on the side, which is the which will be in about this same tone. This is the air metallic, and obviously very thin as far as that goes. I this the, the advantage to the air is really that it will go straight through an airbrush. So you can see how thin that is. I can still very easily see gray through that. Um, obviously, when you're brushing on the air paints, it's going to take multiple coats for sure. So, um, let's we, if we look at the top, you can see sort of the four quadrants there. Um, all of them are pretty reflective. Uh, all of them, you know, that is to say, when I look at the Retributor armor, let's get that in the light, you can see that reflectivity. Um, I rate my True Metallics very highly on their reflectivity. If it's meant to be polished, which is what it should look like without weathering, they should be bright. Now let's take to that one. You can see also very, very bright very, very reflective. Um, pretty smooth reflection point there into the camera, which is nice. Um, you can't really, uh, you don't really see too much of the pigment. One of the, one of the differences with metal paints compared to, uh, compared to, say, you know, like a regular paint like this, okay, a colored paint, is that the way the pigment dissolves into the medium Metal paint often uses metal medium, which isn't going to dissolve. Or sorry, it uses metal pigment, um, flakes of real metal. Um, and as a result of that, uh, often it's aluminum or something like that. And uh, that's not going to dissolve into a medium. It's just going to get suspended. And so as a result of that, you it's harder for the little pieces of pigment to get trapped in between the molecules and to evenly space out as you get on, say, a flat matte paint like what's on his shoulder blade there. Um, overall, pretty decent coverage. If we take a look at the brighter color, let's look at the classic gold. I do love these bottles. Um, one thing I will give this uh, Dark Star incredibly high marks for 
is the quality of their bottles. I don't know if you can see that tip. It's got a nice stay clean tip here. Um, very heavy duty um, cap that you know you've sealed on. Like absolutely fantastic bottle design. Um, I know that sounds silly to even comment on, but to me it's a very big deal. Lots of manufacturers don't do that well and you end up losing paint because of it because the bottle stays open or it dries or it's annoying to work with because you know the tip doesn't want to uh stay closed and stuff like that and that's just really annoying um not the case here dark stars bottles are absolutely fantastic um that's probably not going to be visible on camera but you can see it's even more reflective now because i put that very bright gold on there like that is reflecting silver in the camera but when i turn it away from the light you can see it most certainly isn't but that's good. That's what we would want. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about putting some some shade over this. Let's see what happens. And of course, as always, I'm as previously. If you watch my video, we're going to shade with some scale seventy five uh, ink intensity chestnut. And looks like everything I've done with this so far has worked absolutely fantastic with the acrylic inks or mediums. You can see no issue there. Goes on nice and smooth. I can even do it on my finger there to test. You can see how it tints that. No issue there at all. Um, mixes well. I have found that these mix very well with other metallics, um, other acrylic metallics. Um, no issues at all. So even if you only have part of them, uh, you can mix the range you've got quite easily with your other existing acrylics um, across the range. Uh, I have found that um, it they're the overall. I like them. I wouldn't say I found my ultimate gold paint yet. Their pigment is still just a little bit bigger than I would like. Um, the coverage isn't quite as good as I would want. Uh, Overall, these are great gold paints. What I will say is these are probably some of the best on the market right now. Um, I, I, the range of colors they have is fantastic. The price is, is you know pretty much competitive. If you're in the States, it's probably as much as a GW pot or a little bit more. But as I said, it's 17 milliliters compared to, what, 12, I believe, in a GW pot. Yeah. So, you know, these two things are about the same price, and this is 50% more, roughly. So, you can't really complain about that. Um, Shipping-wise, they came to me here in the U.S. Um, pretty quickly. Took a little more than a week uh, from my order for them to get here, which wasn't too bad at all. Um, they, like I said, they're, where they fall down is coverage isn't quite as good as I would want. Pigment isn't quite as small. Um, so the smoothness of the gold isn't quite as good as I would like. Uh, that being said, if, you, if you're not an absolute gold snob like I am, um, when you look at the difference here between, you know, and I don't think it comes through on camera because this reflects so strongly, how bright, how reflective, how smooth that gold is versus, say, that, um, there's a difference. It's probably not showing there because it's very hard to show metallics on camera. That's why competitive miniature painters don't like true metallics because they photograph like garbage um but overall i think if, if you're used to gw golds for the most part i think you would find these to be a great investment um i find the rest of the gw range beyond the retributor armor to be fairly underwhelming um and i think this range is very strong they have a lot of different tones um to do a lot of different gold paint um, it does have a very, very, very high shine to it, which is fantastic um, for your true metallics. It really makes your miniatures pop. Um, as I said, the bottles are great. Um, the customer service was really fantastic when I ordered it. So overall, I think that there are far more pros than cons. Uh, I think we're very close to finding a great gold paint, and I do use these some in my rotation. Um, I often mix them in if I want to play around with my color tone. Like, I can mix these in with, you know, the Vallejo Metal Color without issue. And I've, I've done that on a couple occasions, and it's just fine. Uh, no problem at all mixing these through. Or if I need to airbrush something and I want a particular tone, they go right through. Um, so overall, I'm going to give them a B plus.
uh, which I think is the best I've ever given a, um, you know, a, a, any of the gold paints I've tried. I'll tell you that all the rest are certainly lower. So I would say if you're in the market to try something new, you want to experiment a little, look up Dark Star. I'll put the link below um, where you can find all of their metals. Um, as I said, they have both golds and silvers. I've only tried the golds, but uh, I, I've been uh, pretty happy with them. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that product review. Um, I hope it was useful to you um, and gave you some new ideas for something to try. Uh, like it if you give it a like. Subscribe for more product reviews coming in the future. As I said, check out Dark Star. Links below. And as always, see you next time.